Alright, breaking out of here, man. I'm outside. Freaking outside. <laughs> Why is Arizona gotta be so damn hot, bro? Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we're gonna be doing a few things. Starting off, I wanna get the injectors off the EP3, take them over, go get them clean. And while we're out, I need to go and pick up some materials so that I can practice welding. <laughs> so yeah, I picked up a welder. This is the second item that I said that I purchased for myself for my birthday. Uh, picked up a Vulcan 220, bro. I did not buy this brand new. I did buy it used. So no, I did not spend 1200 bucks on this damn thing. Dude, did you guys know that these bottles go for like four or 500 freaking dollars, man? Yeah, I got a, uh, like a combo, like a bundle deal. You know what I'm saying? Bought it secondhand from a guy. I don't know. We're going to get more into that whenever I, um, whenever, whenever I go pick up some material. I want to practice because we have a lot of welding that we have to do on everything. Oh my God. Sir. All right, there's our injectors and I'm just taking the entire fuel rail. You know, for some reason, that's how I always take Cody injectors. I always take it on the fuel rail. It's like, a, I guess that's a me thing. I don't know, <laughs> but let's hit the road. First stop is Glendale Steel Supply. We're gonna go in here and steal some supply. I mean, get some steel supply. I mean, you know what I mean. Why do I see puddles that always want to drive through it really fast? <laughs> the guys come out yelling at me. What the fuck are you doing? Wow. Wow. Hold up. Banks performance. Isn't that for diesels? Is that a Chevy sticker? <laughs> All right. We got our material and just pulled up to Cody's house. I'm just dropping these off. He's going to clean them and then bring them back to us later. So I grabbed some material from Glendale Steel Supply. Now, this tubing here we're not gonna be using today. This stuff is gonna be for my very first welding project on the channel, so that's gonna be coming up here really soon. Something that I'm wanting to tackle. Now, I definitely don't need this much material. Matter of fact, I probably need that much. <laughs> but you can only buy this stuff in 20 foot sections, bro. So what can I say? I'm already stocking up my scrap bin. But uh, this tubing right here is actually inch and a half. Uh, this is the same size tubing that you would use to make a to do a roll cage So I don't mind having some extra of that laying around and this is just One size under that this outside diameter will fit inside of that inside diameter So it'll slide and that is gonna be a really important feature in what it is that we're gonna be doing for my first welding project <laughs> So now this stuff right here while I do need I do need a, a piece of this for that. Um, I also got this stuff just to kind of, th this I didn't even need. I just grabbed this stuff for practicing. So I have something kind of thick and something thinner that I can do some practice welding on. All right, so there is obviously some things that we still need to get here, uh, but I mean, this is the biggest part of the puzzle, bro. I can't tell you guys how excited I am to finally own a decent welder, bro. Like, I'm stoked, dude. I am freaking stoked, and uh, I don't know. It's just, it's just one of those things that I feel like I should have done this a long time ago, and I really think that this is an element that the channel is most certainly missing. I mean, aside from actually going out racing, but we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. <laughs> Anyhow, I know I say this every time, but I'm sorry about the audio. I have an air conditioner going here. I have an air conditioning up there on my wall going, and I have a fan blowing air conditioning from inside the house. Try to cool it down in here, bro. Freaking Arizona, man. We're hot as hell out here. Anyhow, it's obvious that there's still some things I'm gonna need. One thing that really stands out right now is a welding table. So, like, just looking around my garage, it's like, okay. I want to do some practice welding, but where am I going to do it at? Am I am I really going to do it up here on my workbench? There we go. <laughs> what do you think? That'll do for now, right? 
All right, so I got these two pieces cleaned up really quick, and I just kind of, I put a little bit of a bevel, not like a huge bevel. I'm just, I'm practicing here, man. I want to get used to the machine, you know what I'm saying? And used to, like, how to weld, <laughs> lowercase e's, right? Lowercase e's, <laughs> I don't know. Before I do this, I, I want to try to put a couple beads on this thing. This is, um, this is a piece that the guy that I bought the welder from gave me to practice on, so, like, he did a couple on this side. Some of this stuff is from me. I'm not, no, let's not even look at it. <laughs> Gotta turn our gas on, grab our helmet, put some boogers on this. <laughs> Sounds so official, bro. Guys, you got the gas coming out. You know what I'm saying? It's got gas, man. <laughs> I need some snips. <sighs> Dude, one of the problems that I run into, like when I lean over like this to weld, the entire inside of my mask is getting lit up by the light above me. So whenever the whenever this goes dark to weld, like the screen is dark and I'm trying to look at my weld through, but the entire inside of the mask is lit up and bright, you know what I'm saying? Like I feel like there should be like something that you put right here, like a cloth piece to go over. I don't know. I, I think it's because I kind of have bad eyesight. It's hard for my eyes to focus on the weld whenever the inside of my mask is just lit the hell up, you know what I'm saying? Doing some little tacks. All right, I'm gonna try to do a beat. Oh. I made a hole. This stuff is really thin, okay? It's really thin. Hey, try to refrain from making fun of me, all right? Don't be making fun of me. I Don't be making fun of me, okay? I'm just kidding. You guys can make fun of me. It's all right. I'm 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 learning here. I'm learning. So uh, that was a couple of the, the two tacks that I did. And then that was the first, like, attempt at a bead. And then I blew a hole through it. And then this is the one that I just did. I mean, I... It doesn't look nearly as freaking bad as the uh, the welds that I used to do with that flux core welder. I mean, it's a lot better than that, right? But. Well, that's freaking ugly. It's all on one pipe. It's not on both of them. <laughs> yeah, that one came out pretty ugly. I, well, I mean, I, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I don't, you guys can put it in the comments. Tell me what it looks like, but. It started going like up this way. It's not even touching both pipes. Anyhow. Goodbye, my friend. That thing's really hot. I want to try to do some thicker shit. I'm really excited to try this. So let's uh let's figure out our settings and get to it. So this is actual voltage on this side. So you go back. This is where you set the diameter of the wire that you're using. This is where you set the gauge of like how thick the material is. And then you confirm, and then it'll automatically give you a layout. So this is the volts it recommends, and this is the wire speed it recommends. Now you can still adjust from that. Like I can adjust the volts up, I can adjust the volts down, but this is, it, it's an automatic feature, you know what I'm saying? Which I'm sure for most welders who have been doing it for many years, um, they probably don't care for it, but it gets you in the range, you know, you know what I mean? So. Like you put in your thickness and, and, and all that and then it gives you like a parameter to start at. So um, now obviously I don't have enough experience to, to just start welding and look at that and say, oh, I need more heat, I need less heat. But that, that's something that I'm hoping to build with time. But anyhow, I think I have it where I need to be. <laughs> I think, I don't know. I'm gonna go ahead and just try. So I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just like tack it in a couple spots, I'll tack it and then try to just do some beads. Um, I, w I mean, I would like to just send it all the way through, but I wanna do like a small section and then just kind of look at it, see how I'm doing, um, and then and then do another section. I don't know, whenever we run out of weld here, I'll probably just flip it and do the other side. Alright, 
I'll be back. I need to do more research. All right, so I cranked up the voltage without cranking up the wire speed. Um, I had it at like 16 volts at the wire speed was at 121. So, and through my research, it is recommended for the wire speed to be a, between 240 and 290 whenever your voltage is anywhere between 14 to 19. So, and I was at 16, so I should be around 250 on my wire speed. I was at 121. So that's the reason why it was just popping, doing weird shit out of magic. I don't know, I'm gonna try it. <laughs> try to turn the wire speed up now. All right, we're at 20 volts, 260 on our wire speed. We're sending it, Poppy. Let's do this. move my camera the camera lens's worst enemy bro is the freaking grinder and welding sparks screw the lens up real quick all right let's get in here i need gloves man oh yeah oh yeah oh good luck some shit. All right, this thing's really hot, but let's test it out. Still in one piece. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, so that, that's, that's the one that I just did right now. I mean, it's not terrible, right? It looks like a little caterpillar. I mean, there ain't no dimes in there, but. Look, I'm just starting out. Just start now, I, you, you know? I don't know if you guys can tell, I'm really excited about this, man. So, uh, I'm eager to learn. Definitely eager to learn. Ouch, 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 ouch. I need gloves, I need gloves. Good. Son of a bitch. What the hell? All right, so that first time, I just didn't have the uh, plate clean enough. I cleaned it better and the tacks actually held. So I flipped the pipe over and tried it again. So I am coming to terms with the fact that it's gonna take some practice in order to get the welds to look pretty you know what i'm saying it's most certainly gonna take some practice and some experience man but i don't know i think those welds are strong enough to hold it there let's find out huh what do you think is gonna happen huh <laughs> Dude, that's really freaking loud, and it's 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> you already know my motto. Well, we're on our way to Harbor Freight to go see some shopping. I don't know if you know this, but um, I kind of need some gloves. I need gloves. Back at the house, this is what we ended up picking up. So I grabbed a 
pipe and tubing notcher. We're not gonna be using this anytime soon, but I know I'm gonna need it in the future. It did grab me a chop saw, so this is the Hercules one. This is the nicest one that they have at Harbor Freight, so I don't know. I was looking at reviews and I watched some reviews and stuff on YouTube and everybody says that it's a freaking great chop saw, so I definitely need something for cutting metal a little bit more efficiently than just using a freaking uh, grinder, you know what I'm saying? A cutoff wheel. But I'm gonna get that out here in a second and we'll go through what's in the bag here in a second first things first is i grabbed a heavy duty welding cart get over here this one will actually fit my welder you know what i'm saying so whenever i bought this welder it did not come with a cart I had to grab a cart separate, but the thing is, is this thing, the welder does not fit on this cart. This is a Harbor Freight cart as well. This one uh, is like 50 bucks at Harbor Freight. I looked on Facebook Marketplace really quick and I found somebody selling a used one in brand new condition for $35. So I went and I paid $35 for this welding cart and I, but I didn't realize that it wasn't going to fit my welder. So if you guys look down here, like the, the actual spot where the welder is supposed to be sitting is hanging off over the edge and then it doesn't fit inside of this lip and then you can't even scoot the welder all the way back because the welder actually hits the bottle so I don't even have the bottle sitting all the way against here like it's supposed to be so the whole the whole setup is real rickety dude and I don't want to risk either the bottle falling over or my welder falling off this damn cart. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get this slapped together really quick and we'll switch the welder and everything over to this cart. And then we'll pick back up on all the rest of the goodies. <laughs> dude this is a hundred times better of a freaking welding car man this thing is solid so now the actual the welder actually sits on there um it's got a little stop on the back that stops it and it's got a little adjustable stop on the front that holds it so the help the the welder's in there nice and tight it's got multiple places to actually hang all your welding leads and your power plug and now the freaking bottle is actually pulled all the way up against the cart and it's nice and tight and I don't have to worry about that falling over. Much better quality wheels, dude. The wheels on this are way better quality. It's got these big massive handles that you can freaking push it around. Hell yeah, dude. Definitely money well spent. If you guys need a welding car, I most certainly recommend grabbing this one from Harbor Freight. And if you sign up for their, um, I don't even know what it's called, but they have like a membership now. Uh, this thing was originally like $140 or something like that. It came out to 104 bucks. So you actually get a pretty damn good savings whenever you sign up for their membership. But yeah, dude, for 100 bucks, man, you can't freaking beat it. That is a dope ass cart. And this cart, I actually feel confident in being able to roll this thing out to the backyard if I ever need to. When all this was all set up on the cheap cart from Harbor Freight, I mean, don't get me wrong, dude, this thing is decent. I mean, if you're on a budget, I mean, this thing brand new costs 50 bucks. Just the problem is it doesn't fit that size of a welder. So you'd want to have, like, if you have a smaller welder, I'm sure this thing would be great. And probably a smaller bottle, one of those, you know, shorter guys. That thing would probably be great. But yeah, no, this is most certainly a, a come up, an upgrade for sure. a much more effective way of ah, woo, ah oh you know what 
Look who has gloves now, boy, huh? I also got a few of these magnets. So a couple of like these medium sized ones and then a package of the smaller ones because I'm sure these are going to come in handy whenever we're welding. And then I also grabbed a package of earplugs, which I should have used right now. <laughs> I figured if I'm going to be doing a lot more grinding and like cutting with that damn thing, especially, I ought to use some earplugs because my ears do be ringing after I'm done cutting with a freaking grinder. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so anyhow, that's a much easier way to be able to cut this stuff and get it nice and straight, dude. But I will say, where before my most dangerous tool in my garage was probably the grinder. Well, actually, maybe maybe the bench grinder. Who freaking knows? Um, that thing now takes the cake, dude. I've had a bad experience with one of these before. Uh, it, it wasn't this style. It wasn't... Um, the style that has this kind of wheel it had a diablo blade on it and it was for cutting aluminum whenever i was working at the sign shop i had cut a piece of aluminum and then i lifted it back up without the blade actually stopping and the piece that i cut off the blade grabbed that it shot it across the room hit the wall come flying back and hit the trash can right next to me in which it was a steel trash can one of those big 55 gallon drums and i put a big ass freaking dent in it bro but whenever it did that it tried to pull my hand into the blade also it was just it was a moment this this happened to me when i was probably like 20 years old dude and um it, it kind of scarred me whenever i'm using anything like this i'm always a little hesitant man kind of nervous so you guys just know something like this most certainly is dangerous you gotta use this thing with caution use it with care you don't want to just send that damn thing you gotta kind of cut slow and i have the habit now whenever i'm done cutting i hold the blade all the way down till it completely stops and then i lift up it's just a safety thing that I have gotten used to doing now over the years. Anyhow, I'm most certainly happy to have that thing here in the garage, dude. But now I'm starting to realize that I'm going to have to do some pretty heavy, like major organizing around here to um, to make all this stuff usable. You know what I mean? I don't want I don't want to have to like tuck this thing away inside of the laundry room and like have to go and dig it out every time. Like I, I yeah. I need to do something around here for sure. I wanted to talk to you towards the end of this uh, and, and just kind of talk about my experience of researching and trying to find what welder to get and whatnot and just some things that were unexpected to me. Just in case any of you guys are looking to get yourselves into a welder or a setup or something similar to this, just so you're, you're not hit with all the surprises that I was hit with. And realistically, it shouldn't come as a surprise, it's just, some things I didn't necessarily think of. So whenever I go sought out to like purchase something like this, I always am like budget oriented. You know what I'm saying? Now, whenever it comes to a welder, I wanted to get something that was going to be good enough quality that I can do good work with. Something, something good enough that I can learn and teach myself basically a new trade. You know what I'm saying? So... There are some really cheap ass welders out there, especially flux core. You want to kind of stay away from that because that I feel like really screwed with my confidence in welding, with my my confidence in my ability to weld because flux core is just garbage, dude. Either way, of course, I started looking around at Harbor Freight stuff, you know, because Harbor Freight does have a lot of budget friendly setups that are, you know, relatively cheap, but at the same time, they have some good quality stuff too. And I have been hearing for well well over a year or so now friends of mine and people like on social media and stuff talking about these Vulcan welders saying that they're actually really freaking good that they're really good welders and a lot of people will stand by these things so as I was looking into it man honestly this was not the one that I was looking to get this welder right here brand new cost 1200 freaking dollars that that already was a little bit out of my budget but then I found one second hand so I bought this from a guy who owns his own company he built gates for a living you know what I'm saying and he ended up getting something a little bit smaller that was easier for him to load in and out of his truck and take it with him on the go this is kind of a bigger machine you know what I'm saying so he needed something a little bit smaller I mean of course you run into the problem whenever you buy something secondhand whether it's broken or the guy is hiding something or, or this and that the guy came to my house we set the welder up he brought some material with him and we sat out here probably for like 30 40 minutes and he went over like 
setting. He did some welds, he let me do some welds, and we're going back and forth. Like, he was a really cool dude. Real genuine guy that I feel like wasn't trying to screw me, you know what I'm saying? And so far, this thing is working just fine. So, he had this up for 700 bucks, which is quite a bit cheaper than the original 1200 But you need to remember, you need a bottle, bro. You have to have a bottle whenever you're getting into welding, and obviously, you need a mask. Luckily for me, I had a mask. I called a local place here to get, because I was looking at another welder that didn't come with a bottle, um, to get a bottle, and I was gonna get an 80 cubic foot or something. I forget what they actually meter it in, whether it's cubic feet or foot pounds or something like that, but either way, it was an 80. This, I believe, is 125. So for the 80 bottle, it was like over $400 for the bottle and have it filled in which you only have to buy the bottle once but still dude like over four hundred dollars for the bottle alone so if you went walking into harbor freight and you grabbed yourself one of their cheaper welders that are like 600 bucks and you're excited you're like hell yeah you know you just you just put 600 dollars down on a welder but you're excited because you want to get into welding um and then you realize oh shit it's going to cost damn near that to get a bottle now as well like what so that's one thing to keep in mind bro so not only the bottle but also you know these welding masks these things aren't cheap either this is a cheaper one i believe this one runs about a hundred dollars but you gotta remember you're, you're you're gonna be spending around 100 to 200 dollars on a on a helmet as well so aside from purchasing the welder itself like this could potentially be around 400 bucks and then you're spending another 100 to 200 dollars that's another like 600 dollars of cost that you're gonna have to spend to get into welding you know what i'm saying and then luckily for me this came with the spool that is already on the gun and then there's a whole nother box down here of brand new welding wire so and it came with all of that and some extra tips and all that so i have still yet to have had to buy wire because it came with a bunch so i don't know how much that cost i don't think it's like crazy expensive but it's just another cost that you need to have in mind whenever you're trying to get into welding and get into a setup like this so and then i had to go and spend another hundred bucks today on the actual cart when i first came across this welder it was up for 700 i'm thinking to myself hell yeah dude 700 dollars that's freaking dope 700 dollars quickly turned into 900 dollars which then quickly turned into over a thousand dollars and then of course all the other little stuff that you're going to get into whenever you start wanting to fabricate these gloves are like I think they're like 12 bucks. Um, and then the notcher was like 40. The saw for cutting the steel, I think that was like $120. And these are all tools that I'm gonna need if I'm wanting, if, if I wanna do with my welder what it is that I want to do. I'm gonna need these tools, you know? And even aside from all this stuff, I still wanna get a pipe bender because I wanna be able to make my own my own roll cages and pipe benders are freaking crazy ass expensive, dude. There's like no budget way of getting into a pipe bender. I found one, the, the cheapest one that I found was like 400 bucks and then you still have to buy the die. And then the die costs about $400. So now you're in it for 800 and that's to bend it by hand, bro. So then they have an attachment that you get to put a hydraulic ram on it so then it's hydraulic and then that costs an extra like three hundred dollars so now you're up over a thousand dollars for a budget pipe bender so yeah dude freaking fabrication tools just aren't cheap man and a lot of times whenever you find stuff that is cheap it, it's it's not gonna last you you know what i'm saying it's gonna freaking fall apart on you another thing that i have learned uh, through trying to find tubing notcher and to try to find a pipe bender is that people don't sell fabricating tools like this kind of stuff very often at least not here in Arizona I guess I've been looking on offer up and I've been looking on Facebook and I mean for a few weeks now I've been researching this stuff and keeping an eye on the market to see if I see any like pop up for sale and dude there <laughs> there just aren't any so yeah, it's hard to come across secondhand fabrication tools like benders and notchers and stuff like that um, at a decent price because, like I said, I'm that person that I always tried because and it's not that I'm broke, dude. It's just that I have been broke before. You know what I'm saying? I've been there where I have like hardly any money in my bank where I pay all my bills and now I'm back down to zero and I'm broke. Like, I've been there and I work hard for my money so I struggle to like spend money <laughs> like whenever I spend this kind of money right here on myself it always makes me feel bad inside like I don't know if any of you guys can relate but it always 
like puts this like bad like dirty feeling inside of me like bro i shouldn't be spending this much money you know what i'm saying but i i have to get away from that i need to invest into myself for these type of things because we have a lot of projects coming up that this is most certainly going to help us with so anyhow i'm gonna go ahead and get quick damn cart anybody want to buy a cart 30 bucks <laughs> peace <laughs>